Hey gang, Scott here. A few days ago, I posted a video about Topaz Labs Sharpen AI, uh, how I'm using it, you know, full review, all the controls, the different models that are available to sharpen our images, pros and cons, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a link in the show notes to that video. You can go check that out. There's a feature of the Sharpen AI user interface I wanted to squeeze into that video, but the review was getting a little long. So I broke it out into a separate thing here. I wanna show you the comparison view, which is a fantastic way to figure out which of the models is going to be best for your photo. Sometimes it's not quite obvious which one of those sharpening models is going to work the best. Comparison view is the way to do that. And really quick, if you're thinking about adding Sharpen AI to your toolkit, check the show notes and do two things. One, use the link I have in the show notes, and two, apply the offer code, save you a bit of money, it won't cost you anything extra, it'll save you money actually. That gives me a little bit of support, but you gotta use the link and apply the offer code. So let's have a look at comparison view. So I'm in Sharpen AI. I have one of my image quality models selected to soft and uh, a normal amount of processing. Is that, that was what felt right to me for this image. It was just generally a little bit soft. And so I chose that. It's like, you know, well, well, what about the other ones? What about the other options? You know, if I choose, well, motion blur, and then I have to wait a couple of minutes and I see a couple of minutes, a few seconds, and uh, let the let the engine update. It's like, mm, okay, well, this, this background kind of looks a little better, but you know, well, what about the ice? I wasn't paying attention there. Let me go back to too soft. It'll regenerate, come back again. And you know, this kind of dance gets uh, very old very quick. That's where comparison of view comes into the mix. We choose that from our view menu and we get this four-way grid laid out that uh, gives us all the different model engines at our fingertips. Upper left, your original photo. Upper right, the motion blur model. Lower left, the out of focus model. And the lower right, the too soft model. And you can see the lower right, too soft, is highlighted in blue, saying that's what I have selected currently over on the right hand side. And what's so nice about this is uh, first, let's make sure I've got an area that has kind of all of the different types of, of, of sharpness I'm interested in. Like right around here, I've got this background stuff, I've got this foreground chunk of ice, a little bit of this uh, like kind of very contrasty ice. And now that all of the models have updated, I can play, right? And so right now I have two soft selected, and that means I'm looking at the lower right corner. Well, I could, I could pump that up a little bit and say, well, what if I remove blur a little more? And that model updates. Okay, um, now what about motion blur? When I look at this ice compared to this ice, these look kind of sh uh, sharp on the top. So I'll switch to motion blur, now the upper right quadrant is what's active. I have different settings. I can say, well, what if I said it's really blurry? And it'll update and generate that. Hmm, um, that's pretty good, but maybe I don't have to be as aggressive on the blur. And you start to be able to play these games and measure each one separately. Okay, out of focus. If I choose out of focus, now I'm in this lower left quadrant and I know for this photo this model doesn't make sense because out of focus is more for where you just didn't get your focus set on the object you were interested in focusing like the example of you know you're taking a portrait you focus on a person's eye but yeah you actually catch their nose or they, you know the tail edge of their their cheek as the focus point so I know out of focus is really not what I want to be paying attention to very much I want to really pay attention to motion blur versus too soft now I look at these again, motion blur looks really crunchy now. You know, that, that just looks over the top. So we'll bring that back to normal. The ice just didn't look natural there. I can play all these games. I can, I can dial in the settings and then ultimately decide which one do I like, which one feels the most natural, the most sharp to me. I'm still liking what, uh, what Too Soft is doing, but maybe I need to get a little bit more aggressive on the blur. Let's try that. And I think between the two where it's interesting, I like the the midground and background of motion blur, but I like the ice in the foreground. This 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 feels a little too crispy for me in the motion blur. 
So I think I'll stick with too soft and maybe I'll try one more shot of super supercharging that. Hmm, that's better. Back that off a little bit. But it's this comparison view that lets me be able to very quickly compare the different models without having to try to like you know watch it and now bounce back and forth between things. And when I'm all done, it's like okay, I, I like that. I'm good. Let me switch back to my single view. I have two soft selected. I have those settings dialed in and I can now pan around the rest of my image and check things out, make sure all the stuff's looking really good here. Let's check out over on this side here. Looking good. Up top. Yeah, this is looking great. So I can go ahead and apply that and be finished. So that is the comparison view in Sharpen AI. It is perfect for when you're not quite sure which sharpening model is the best for your photo. Sometimes there is a clear winner. Sometimes the auto option just nails it. And some scenes you might need to do a little tweaking. And if you're not sure which model to start with, hit that comparison view, get them all up there. It'll take a little longer to process each one, but it will let you compare and contrast the different settings. Then you can choose the main model and fine tune your settings from there. Hope you found the video useful. Any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.